Hello Saints Nation and welcome back to some more NJCAAE playoff action here at the St. Clair Saints Rainbow Six roster. We got a 1-1 series right now between St. Clair and Barton Community College and it's a nail biter here so far. I mean Barton going to take map number 1-7 to 1, St. Clair going to take map number 2-7 to 4. So we got a couple good games already under the belt in map 3, the one that decides who goes to semifinals and who goes home. This has been such a topsy-turvy series. There's been so many times where people are in 1vx scenarios or 2vx scenarios that they somehow turn it around and win rounds. Both Barton having it and St. Clair having it. So I think for me, this could go anybody's way. And, you know, Chalet is such a crazy map. I think it's a very balanced map between attackers and defenders. So I think for me, this is going to be a very, very interesting one. And I, I mean, all the marbles on the table, right? Both these teams trying to make it to semifinals, trying to get those Ubisoft points you're talking about earlier. Uh, this is where you really show your medal and you say, okay, we have this clutch scenario. We have this clutch in our genes. And, and for me, this is where both teams need to shine for them to actually make a difference. Because going into that semifinal, it is whoever wins this, regardless of who does, it is going to be a 2-1 series. And it was very close for both of these maps. So I mm -hmm. think for me, they're going to have to find that extra caliber to prove that they can make it forward here further than just a semifinal in the NGC AAE playoffs. Yeah, and you brought out several times already throughout this one on, you know, that game number one, 7-1 scoreline doesn't represent how that game actually went. And so we're not going to even dive too deep into these scorelines. We know these teams are very evenly matched before just even hopping into this one. I think this map and with the side of BCC starting on defense could really help them out here. Um, I don't know how St. Clair feels on this map. You know, they said they felt a little bit more confident there on Villa. Coastline wasn't as good for them, but this one is a little bit more of a big old question mark for us right now on how this one is going to go. So Fact, you're going to be banned out here early and now St. Clair is still on their bands here. So I, I, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, but so far... Pretty typical band coming through with Thatcher there. And then another one going to be on to Dokabi. Is that how you pronounce that Do one? Dokaibi. Dokaibi. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, hey, it's going to be the first couple first attacker bands coming through. And uh, here we go. It's going to be the defending bands now coming at our way. And I think that Dokubi was pretty effective. I think really the difference was the SMG there was more effective than anything. We saw that there was a, like, Thuggan almost went crazy with that SMG. Found a lot of headshots there to clutch out a couple rounds there early on this one. We are going to have a Valkyrie band as well. And yeah, it will probably be Amira. No surprise there. It has been banned out. In the last two maps, it is such a strong operator there. And I mean, for me, I definitely think for both of these teams, it is going to come down to this defense. How well can they perform on the defensive side? Because that has been the strong suit for both of them. Attackers has just been, you pick up what rounds you can, and then your defense holds strong to try and get as many rounds as possible. So uh, for Chalet, that's what I'm looking for, is teams to have a good strategy going into the attack and a, a good defense strategy. Because if you can find a good defense strategy, it just cripples how the attackers are going to go. And we are going to see on defense, starting first is going to be the uh, BCC forget what team name they're called. The BCC Barton, regardless. Uh, Community are gonna College. Be Barton Community Barton College, College is okay. what BC is going to be standing for here. And so, yeah, yeah Char's on the Sledge, Kinger on the Ayana, Tyler Nomad. I mean, Ace on the Jam Beast and Amaru on the Rapid. All going to be very typical, but actually six picks coming through from both sides. So we do see the Twitch actually come out. I'm very much so a fan of that one coming through here early in this one. And then Salt the Archer not confirming it yet, but we'll actually now confirm the Cade through as well. So both six picks getting utilized from both these rosters as of now. And it's all going to come down to this here, John. Map number three, everything on the line for these NJCAAE playoffs. Win or go home, essentially, at this point. It is going to be a close match. And for me, the Malusi not getting banned out. Very, very helpful. We saw in that map, Defenders number one, how effective it could be on the attackers. defensive side. And with these small corridors, you have to walk through, especially through these windows. It is going to be very tough to walk through that. And, and even on this basement ejector, I think, obviously, uh, for this map specifically, this was the hardest point to take if you're the attackers. It seems good because the garage is so close to the outside and you can try to get a plant down. But it is very, very hard to break through this one. So I think for me, if, someone, if either team can take an attacking round, on this basement it would be massive and the other two really up for debate because i think this is really the only locked in one that both teams can say their defense can hold i think uh the other ones are going to be very susceptible to the attackers being able to take them so uh i mean for me st Clair has to break through here on attack if they want to try and find it and a good start would be a 1-0 but again i definitely think for both these teams it's going to be a close one it's going to come down to just a couple rounds between the two teams because they've both been performing so well in this series you ready for another one of deprives hot takes all right let me hear it 
St. Clair get a 3-3 or better half on the attack, they win the game. If they are down 4-2 or worse, they lose the game. Wow, that's that's a spicy take. That is a very spicy take. You need them to win three. On Yeah, All right. I, I don't see them winning this series unless they can find three attacking rounds. I'm going to be I completely like honest here. And I think, uh, I mean, overall, I think we're going to have the defending side favored ever so slightly here. So I think three rounds on the attack is just all they'll need. And then they can use that defending side slightly to their favor. So we'll see what happens overall, but as of now, the Twitch drone getting fully put to use. Rapid going to be getting that one shot out those here, so he's just going to send through another. <laughs> and here we go. He's still trying to gather some more of this intel. That's why I really do like this Twitch pick. It really does gather all the intel on where these players are, the openings, and it's going to result in Archer actually getting tagged down and cleaned up from Kinger early in this round, providing a player advantage. Now going to look very good for St. Clair going into attacking this site. And JMB still up at two-thirds HP is huge. Very healthy here in this round, and Thugonomics gonna be floating around here on first floor, trying to find a flank. See if he can peek anyone out in these doors, but not gonna be able to find anyone just yet. JMB's gonna get bombed down here, going for the plant, and is gonna be able to get it. Kinger gonna find Toaster as well, but a kill gonna come through trade. Thugonomics did find someone on that flank. JMB's gonna go down as well from Jester. Chaz gonna spot it out here. Oh, that's his teammate That's there. his teammate, yeah. So, <laughs> it is gonna be a three on three still in play here now, and we are gonna see Thugonomics who has had a Fairly good game for himself already throughout this series. Back on it once again here now in this three on three. Let's see what he can do. He's looking for this one. Rapid though, gonna find the fray, gonna shut him down. Now putting it to a three versus two in favor of your Saints. It's gonna be Urfi going down. Jester, all that remains. He will take down Rapid. Now 1v2 takes down Charles as well. Kinger, 1v1, not a lot of time to work with, but Kinger is not in a angle. great position to get the bomb. And he will clean it up. Kinger shuts him down. St. Clair take round number one. And oh my goodness, was it a close one here, John? Finds the 4K there. And Jester on a 3K himself. So that came down to such clutch. And Kinger, you see him popping off over there. In, and he, he throws up the double <laughs> He's pistols. Off the pistols. Oh, I like that one. And that's such a confidence booster. He had an ace in that last game as a 4K already in this one. That is so huge to start this one from off. Kinger? That was a 4K from Jeez. Kinger. He ended up going great. Like... Uh, that's such a good start, right? Like, you end up, you talked about, that basement round is t totally, totally defender favored. Yeah. Like, totally defender that's favored. And the fact that they're one. able to get that one is so huge for them on the attack. And, I mean, looking forward here, they most likely want to go back to that one as soon as possible. And that was definitely just a couple of good trades. But in the end, it did come down to that 1v1. And he had to hop on the bomb, didn't have a choice, try and get that defuse to start. And in the end, just was King able to find those shots. And now that you're up 1 0 on attack, that is so huge looking forward in this game. Honestly, taking down uh, Thugonomics when that was still a three on three, so rapid doing that one, will actually have such a big impact on that round and how things turned out for it. Uh, just taking that player out of the mix early and just finding that pick and when the position that he was in really helped just secure that one down for St. Clair. So that is going to be the one nothing lead in their favor as we do see the side of BCC now getting into their preparation phase for this next round. It's going to be St. Clair with a little bit of an upper, you know, kind of head start to this game. And if St. Clair can find another one, a second in a row, I think it's really going to cause problems for BCC. Yeah, for sure. And I was going to say, even in that round, right, I think the whole linchpin of the round was the fact that Thugonomics found the flank, he had an angle on Rapid, and somehow Rapid was able to get that headshot onto him, even though Thugonomics knew exactly where he was. So I think for me, that was so huge. King are going to go down very early here. Thugonomics is going to find him with that peak. Very, very effective here, and that is very calm. I'm going to find the Nitro wow. as well. The long-range Nitro, and that is such a bad start here for the attackers. Down three, or down two already with 240 left in this round still. Thugonomics, just a menace here on this first floor. Yeah, he's doing a great job at what he's doing, and he's just holding it until this player walks into him, and that is going to be the cleanup for Tyler. Really just shutting that player down. That's got to be a nice little confidence boost for Tyler. Taking down one of those really strong players for the side of BCC. Now trying to turn things around is going to be St. Clair playing from down a player. Trying to turn things around. So we got just over two minutes on the clock. So they got time to work with here. And this Char's on his drone. Still trying to scout out. But he's actually not going to spot anything until then. He does realize there is the two shields in there. And there are players behind a lot of them. So JMP's getting peppered down ever so slightly. Tyler going to lose his life here to Urfi. Let's see if Jam Beast and Chars can clean up. 2v4 scenario here. They still have the Breacher, though. Ace still alive, so they can try and push into the site, but they know there's a player here holding this door. Going to try and find the head, but will not peek out just yet. Some patience being used, and they will back off this doorway, at least for the moment, looking for a rotation around, but 
I mean, for St. Clair, it is 2v4. You have a minute 40, so you have a lot of time to decide where you want to go. They will break through this ceiling hatch, and they will have another avenue into the site, but with two people holding this angle, it's going to be really tough for them to actually get access here. Yeah, I don't mind the play call. I think that the, the position they were in before was just not a viable option. Ooh, and that elbow. is going to be some nice tags coming through. Not enough for a full frag. But, oh, actually, he's actually knocked. I didn't yeah. realize he knocked him there in that one. So that's actually really big. And this nade should clean up. And there's actually a player resing him. I might be able to find both. No, Urfie's actually just barely gets tagged by that nade. He somehow keeps his life. If only that was a second earlier, they would have been able to get that clean up. But no. And it's now going to put it back into this 2-on-4. Not able to make this the 2-on-3 like they wanted. With under a minute remaining, things are going to have to start getting a little bit more desperate here for the side of St. Clair. Chars and JMB still trying to do whatever they can. The sledge from Chars trying to find an opening. He will get a nice little break there. And he's going to get a little bit of an eye on sight, but nothing more than that. With 40 seconds on the clock, time really becoming of the essence here, John. Game of inches with that nade. Going to spot him out, but Jess are going to find... JMB's head there, a 1v4 scenario here. They know where Charles is. Charles gonna have to try and do this one, but not a lot of time, not a lot of options here for him to try and do it. He's gonna go walk all the way around to the other side of sight, but with only 25 seconds, not really a chance here. And I mean, it all started with Thugonomics getting those first kills, right? He peeked out of that top floor and was able to find that first kill, and then a crazy Nitro Cell that was able to get that second one. So definitely gonna be the reason why they win this round. We'll try and find one. Charge gonna find one head, looking for more though, but three of them left. He's gonna take it down by Toaster there, and BCC gonna answer with a round of their own. Not much you can do if you are the Saints in that position when you get to Charge's, you know, 1v3 or 1v4, whatever he was in. It's just, doesn't seem too viable, but we will now have a tie game, 1-1. One, one. Going into this round number three, the site is going to be forced to move here. So we are going to go to master bedroom and the office here on the second floor. So the site changing up a little bit. Let's see how they go with that one. A lot of these spawns going to come in at campfire. And I don't know if Kinger is going to stick to lakeside. He looks like he might be trying to take a little bit of a different approach to the site than the rest of his teammates. Yeah, we are going to see Thugonomics swapping it off here to the Mozzie. Obviously, with this with this site moving in, is better for the attackers. I think the basement one, again, we talked about the basement one. Definitely very, very defender favorite. But the rest of them can be anyone's, uh, anyone's game and they can be anyone's site. So we are going to see the sixth pick for Twitch there. And we have seen Twitch quite a lot, actually, in these Defenders last couple of games for St. Clair. I think they definitely like the pick. It eliminates a lot of what they want to do, uh, especially this Mozzie and especially this Jaeger, which have been, uh, you know, the fact that Jaeger is able to block a lot of these nades when they want to go for these entries is so huge. And, I mean, for me, I definitely think I'm looking for St. Clair to find a new approach here because second floor is a lot more complicated to take than basement is. Yes, it definitely is, and uh, they, if St. Clair loses this round, though, they do go back to basement, if I do stay in They've already corrected. used their basement twice. Oh, they've already used their basement yeah, twice. Yeah, they went back to back in that last oh, round. Oh, damn, I thought they were on second floor of that last round. I must be completely lost in the sauce, but no, <laughs> it is going to be St. Clair here. Yeah, trying to uh, take this one on a second floor approach here now, and you never know, it could it could get a little bit better for them. The basement wasn't as good as the first round there for them on that second round, so now with a little bit of a new approach to things, we might be able to see what we can find here on this one but like you were saying barton gonna be a little bit more favored now on the second floor you believe yeah i think so i think for me too the fact that uh thug did not find any initial picks is very very big for st clair it means that they have full force coming into this round and i think second floor again it can be both teams taking it but definitely gonna be favored here because there's such tight quarters for the attackers to walk through there and you have a couple angles on the outside that you can use as the defenders so i think i want to see thug roaming around trying to find these angles from the windows that you can't attack these people from but for me the fact that they're able to get this entry with no frags no nobody lost here is huge yes, for sure so that being said and it is going to be St. Clair still trying to find some entries. It's going to be rapid shooting out of one of those drones. They're stopping any intel from going over to BCC. Another camera shot out as well. It's really good to get those out of the way because there is a, quite a few of them on the second floor, to be honest. So it is going to be Tyler actually in a great position here to potentially be able to find something. There is a player right to his left. If he shot through that window, little does he know, he'd have a player right on the other side of it. And honestly, I love Tyler's position here. If he was just able to, you know, have the intel that we had, John. <laughs> That'd be nice, but you see everyone here for St. Clair on the right side. Oh, Thug gonna find the first kill onto Rapid there. We'll be able to back off without getting traded out. That is such a huge pick, and Thug has been so effective early on in these rounds with these roams. Has done pretty well for himself here in this game, sitting at 4, 2, and 2 so far. Jester also at 4 and 2. 
Salty gonna find Kinger though with a headshot on that SMG and that's gonna be a 3v5 scenario against St. Clair. Down two players on the attack, not looking good for them. Yeah, Thugonomics is gonna be looking to get on the move here now in a moment. Salty is still has a phenomenal lineup here for these players just on the other side of the door. He's gonna try to really utilize this to his advantage. That is gonna be one for Tyler, but the trade is there. Salty with another. He's gonna be on a double, but JMB is able to find that one. So now in a two on three, making this one a little bit more doable, but JMB is gonna fall. Chars one versus three. We feel like we've seen him in this position over and over here tonight. He's gonna try to do it one more time here again, but once again, it's it's not gonna be easy, right? 1v3s are something that you rarely see in Rainbow Six Siege. Thugonomics will find the cleanup onto him there, and that's gonna provide them the little bit of an advantage here in this game, now leading two to one. Yeah, and the key there too was the fact that Salty Archer saw two people in that little people that he had in that doorway and able, was able to call it out to his team. They got a pick there and then he was able to swing and find a double for himself. So we are going to get a pause here in just a moment. And for me, I definitely think uh, a pretty even game so far. 2-1 still. The, the defense here for BCC standing strong. St. Clair able to find that first round uh, with a nice clutch from Kinger. But uh, again, we talked about the fact that if you can get to within 3-3, three, three, I think it is definitely doable here. I think if they're able to at least get a couple Honestly? rounds out of this defense, it would be so huge. I agree. I think the bare minimum for St. Clair is one more defensive yeah. round. Uh, I just, no world where I see them coming back from being down 5 one a half. But if they're down 4-2, you know what? I, I can see All that right. as a possibility. All right. It's something that can work. I'm still very much liking to stick to my hot take of, you know, 3-3 three, three would be perfectly ideal for the Saints and they can come through and still win it in that regard. 4-2, a possibility, but it's heavily going to favor BCC at that point. Yeah, for sure. I, I think St. Clair needs to find uh, another one of these defensive rounds on the... And I mean, to be fair, they do have a lot of favorite stuff. We already saw them use the two basement rotations that they had, which are very defender favorite. St. Clair able to take one of them, but for me, I needed to see them take an, at least another one of these like middle balance series ones, because that's going to be a difference yeah. maker, right? If you can find this round it would be so massive because it stops what they want to do and for me i think it was very good change of approach there for the economics you saw those last two rounds he was very very attack focused he was very very much looking for those picks early on in the rounds but um these two this last one he was very conserved and it was kind of a change of pace and it meant that they could play that kind of slow game wait for st Clair to push into them and that's when they attacked st Clair. so really well played there really well orchestrated defense and i think for me i definitely think for the side of BCC, their defenses look a lot stronger than their offense. I think they, they have these sights on lockdown. They know their positioning. They know where they should be. And you have that kind of like fifth element in uh, Thugonomics that can move around, can be flexible and stuff. So I think for me, looking forward, I definitely want to see uh, a little bit more variety out of the attack here from St. Clair because that is going to be the difference maker, right? That is where you find your rounds. That is where the difference is made just on the attack is where how many attack rounds can you take uh, to fit with your uh, solid defense? Yeah, the Thugonomics roam is definitely proving to be a problem here against St. Clair, and they're looking to try to shut that one down, but it's not been easy so far here throughout this series, so we'll see what happens. Not too sure what's going on with this pause. Players are just trying to figure some things out, potentially talking things over. We do see them reviewing a little bit of stuff. I see all three of those players are all looking at Kinger's computer, so maybe something's going on. Not sure. We're going to have a little bit of an idea here in just a few minutes, hopefully, but as of now players are all just looking like they're chatting in it there might be a little bit more of a technical issue or something because it doesn't look like they're like trying to build a game plan or anything well, right now right well, we're seeing some sort of other they're issue, all maybe. on discord so they're yeah, all talking to true, each other anyway. so we'll, we'll find out in a second uh what's going on over there but for now i mean looking back over this game it's one one right both these teams trying to make it to semifinals. both of them playing this game their hearts out and for saint Clair. A big change in their roster throughout this year. We had a lot of substitutions. We had Vazdex and we had Gangstology in. Um, and now we have some new players coming in to just replace them. And for me, it's definitely been looking up for them so far. I think the fact that you have these new players coming in and you're able to play at that caliber. Uh, I mean, obviously, I think with Vazdex, with Gangstology, with these committed players, it was a lot harder to actually match that level of skill. But I definitely think they lived up to it, especially, um, you know, Kinger. They're pulling their weight. Yeah, and Kinger has stepped up so much oh, in yeah. this series. The fact that he got, you know, he had an ace in the last game. He's already had a 4K in this in this one. Like, he's been doing so well for himself here. And the more that confidence builds, the better it's going to look for St. Clair throughout He was a player too. that didn't even know if he was, like, he was still kind of deciding on if he wanted to play on the roster and not kind of going into this season he's definitely gotten a lot more passionate about it throughout this semester and is definitely looking like a lot stronger of a player in this one here right now and like you said he's definitely proving to hold his own and definitely proving that he is a valuable asset to this team no matter what 
So here we go. And then now it is going to be, yeah, just a key bind yeah, issue from Kinger issue. there. So yeah, technical issue, something that isn't, you know, like, like we we're talking about something that probably not really too busy planning out a game plan or anything, just trying to figure out the problem. So we did see our uh, nice director and producer, Dan, run over there and <laughs> probably fix the issue for him. So it is now going to be us probably up back into this game just in a few seconds. So very excited to see how this one goes. But with Barton leading 2-1, St. Clair gonna, at a bare minimum need this to be a 4-2 half. Yeah, for sure. I think they need to find another round here somewhere, and I definitely think they can do it. Obviously, we saw they have the skill. They have the mental capacity to do it. We saw them take a 7-4 uh, map number two, and like we talked about before, the score lines don't dictate how the game went. I think there was a lot of rounds that could have been. It could have easily been like a 7-1 or a 7-2 on that map number two as well. So I think for me, both these teams have had their strong times. They've had their weak points as well. So uh, this is really going to be how much can you do on the attack compared to what you do on the defense because the defense has just looked so solid for both of these teams it's really just been about how many attacking rounds can you find yeah for sure it's it uh, that's why we're talking about it so much right that's why we're constantly saying so st Clair needs two st Clair needs three it's because the attacking rounds are things that we're looking and diving a deep depth into because we're just assuming like not assuming but like defending side gonna have the favor and aren't yeah. kind of like mental right now is well defending... statistically in statistically, this series yes yeah, statistically in the series the defending side gonna be winning these yeah. games so uh, it, it comes down to how many can you pick up on the attacking side who has the better attacking side yeah, for sure. And we are going to looking like we hopefully can get back into the game here go. in a second. So pause is lifted. We are going to be going into round number four here between these two teams. St. Clair looking to try and pull this one to an even 2-2. And PCC trying to open us up to a 3-1 game here in quarterfinals of NJC AAE playoffs. So what do you think St. Clair can do to try and pull this one even in the attacking side? Honestly, uh, it's going to come down to the team play, right? All pushing at once, finding these trades, just being Defense able to communicate as a team and trading batter. out these players when they do get picked off and just like trying to multi-kill together, right? Get two or three players, maybe not focusing the same angle, but pushing the same general vicinity and actually moving their way in as a unit is definitely going to be a make or break thing. The Saints got to find use of here going forwards in this one. Looks like we are on the first floor here for this one. So that's where the sites are going to be located. A little bit better than the second floor, in my opinion, for St. Clair I, on the offense. Oh, yeah. This is this is first floor? Yeah, this is the first one. Oh, this is first floor. Okay. So, yeah, definitely going to be better. I was talking about basement, the strongest ever. is pretty balanced out for the attackers and defenders. But this is going to be a very key round for both of these teams. Somehow, St. Clair needed to put the momentum back in their favor. They need to find it. And a slight change here. We're going to get the Womai from Thugonomics. So, He's played a couple different things throughout this map so far. A lot of roaming, obviously, with the Womai, with the Goyo as well. Um, and we just see him has kind of the pop-off potential, and that is a lot of what uh, J uh, BCC has needed so far. And we see Jester as well. Uh, a lot of roaming out of him, 5-2 and 5-2 for both of these players, have been really the linchpins here for BCC throughout this game. Yeah, JM Beast is droning through all these area, just trying to get all the intel that he can as of now. That being said, it is going to be Kinger now also trying to do that. And oh my god, these guys keep putting their drones in the bathtub, It's a good man. hiding spot. Like, they better it's be waterproof, man. Like, holy, you're going to be breaking on us out here. But yeah, it's going to be that five on five still in action as time is slowly burning down. Over two minutes, there's still lots of time to work with. But it's going to be rapid on the sledge. Actually, it's going to be, I didn't even realize that. Charters and rapid switched from sledge and twitch. And I mean, it's good to make a change here. Obviously, uh, you are down 2-1. It isn't too drastic, but it is a good change there. It is changing something up, keeping you on your toes all the time, changing up who the operators are playing. So you're not getting used to this rut that you're in. And for me, I definitely think if they can find a first pick, that would be so huge for St. Clair mm -hmm. because that's really been lacking these last couple of rounds is finding that initial frag. So if they can find that, that's going to change this game completely. First Bloods are going to change everything completely. I couldn't agree with you more on that one here, John. So Thugonomics still searching for a pick of his own up here towards his outer window. But he is going to be getting a little bit of util sent his way and completely flashed out, actually forced to turn around and look at that wall of his. So nothing really going to come off those flashes as of yet. But Kinger with a big nade! Oh, did it not I think even... it got Jaeger. Jaeger oh, took okay. it down with this. I was going to say, I was like, <laughs> you're all holding oh, big nade! <laughs> Not gonna come through though, no explosion or anything. It's just gonna be dead <laughs> silence after that. That was funny. But Kinger will still find the opening. Takes down Thugonomics, a big frag to have. The top fragger from BCC all series long down and out of this one. Kinger will be getting tagged, but Rapid gonna get the nade clean up there. And it is actual Urfi as well. Also tagged down to very, very minimal HP. So far, so good for the Saints. 
They do have a small advantage here, but uh, King Air is down to pretty low HP, so they are going to have to watch out. But you are on 5 on 3, and with Earthy down to about 20 HP, but Tyler going to be taken down here by Salty Archer. Looks like he will be traded out the Rapid, going to find Jester, so it is still 4v2 here. Still have an advantage. Earthy, very low HP, waiting for this drop. Not going to come just yet. Yeah, I really like the angle that Earthy's holding here right now. I think it really does provide a lot of value to his team. So it is a, that four on two. Salty Archer and Earthy is all that really it, it, they have to, to make this one kind of work here. Biggest thing for St. Clair, play your numbers, man. They you can't be giving away the numbers advantage you have right now, but no time remaining. Jam Beast is going to go try to get that plant down, but he will get shot out. So now Rapid able to trade it out at least and now put this into a three on one. The trades are something that I said we needed all series long here. So it is nice that you actually do find those. Oh, not enough time. That's going to be it. BCC uh, take what? the round, and unfortunately... They, like, there's... why are they burning so much time doing nothing? <laughs> well, I think the problem was, right, he wanted to get that bomb down because they knew the Goya was low HP, so if they get that plant down, it's immediately a trade for this uh, player, but unfortunately, because the trade didn't go down, they weren't able to use that last nade that they had, and it meant that they took the round, so... I mean, really well played there. Actually, smart play by Salty. The fact that he was able to, to find that first pick, and then he heard the bomb going down, just tunneled in the bomb, didn't even try and go for the other player because he knew even if he gets traded out there by the other player the round's gonna be over because he got that bomb so i think for me really well played there knew where the bomb was going because it was being planted it had to be so in the one or three scenario played very well by salty and unfortunately i think it was just the fact that charles was just a little bit too far away and couldn't get that trade that yeah, really put I, him in the back i got a really bad feeling that's gonna make or break the game john I got uh, just this feeling okay, in my okay. stomach. So that gonna, yeah, you got a lot of feelings in your stomach. I don't think you play off your stomach. I think you play <laughs> off how they play in games. So. No, but I'm telling you, John, I'm scared for them now. That's a big momentum turnover. It's going to be BCC with all the, the momentum in their favor. They can snowball it up here. Now, we are going to be back into the basement. The where St. Clair did find their one round win. But, I mean, at this point, best case scenario for the Saints now, they have a tie game going into the offense. And that's that your best case scenario is definitely going to be a concern. You did say 3-3. Three, three, I, I, I did. I did. I so. did. But we'll, we'll see. I mean, to be honest, they need to find the next two, though. Yeah, uh, it's and tough. it's been really tough for them here. Solve the Archer has been very, very clutch here in these uh, last two maps. Yeah, for sure. He's been uh, cobbing up there yeah, now, 4-2-1 and one in and this game. And, I mean, for me... We are going to get a change. We are going to have Flores coming through here for Kanger. So they're trying some new stuff out. I like it. I like the change. We do have JM Beast again on this ace. He does like to play that hard Reacher Planter role. And I mean, the fact that you're trying out new operators is always good because you're always going to surprise your opponent with what you have. And it doesn't matter what they think is coming at them. It's going to be something different. So Flores, very effective here. But unfortunately, the mute does kind of negate what he wants to do with that. With those uh, EMPs. I, I can't remember what they're called. But uh, he doesn't get a lot of what Flores wants to do with those. Yeah, and, you know, St. Clair, very spread out here right now compared to usual. I mean, I we saw a lot of these players spawn in different locations. Yes, those three players down there are grouped up, but the other two, not really in sight as of yet. As, uh, you know, they do really have the split spawns, and they want to try to attack this one at a bunch of different various angles. I do really agree with the play call. So, so you two will be going out over into this general lobby of the basement, and that actually will be the shield now dropped from Salty Archer. So he is forced to move out of position, and a couple of those Molotovs going to be coming through and really just forcing these players out of position. Kanger, oh. all the intel in the world. Oh, he gets all the damage on to Jester and the cleanups there. He's not. JM Beast will find the entry. That is so big. And we see the difference Flora is making here. And the fact, they're called jammers. I just remembered they're called jammers. So the fact that they were able to clear out those jammers early and get that Flora's drone in there is so massive because now the site is open. If you can somehow get this plant, that is going to be so hard to retake this because there's so many angles you have to cover. And JM Beast with the plant going down, Nitrosol going to be on him though. Stuck is going to pop that one. So we'll stop that plant in its sights, and that is gonna be bombed down on site, but Charles and King are gonna find two. That is massive. Yeah, it is gonna be still Thugonomics here though, frying, keeping this one alive for the side of BCC. Now a three on two. Make it a two on three. Wait, how is this a two v three? Now 2v1? Okay, it's not going to that two lives or something. I don't know. 2v1, Salty Archer. Going to be all that remains, but he will take down Chars, and he's looking for more. He knows there's only one other player here. Tyler has Bomb on site. Not going to go for the peak just yet. And looks like Salty will be working all the way around the other way. Will he call this one out? Will he know where this is going? Doesn't want to go for the plant. Doesn't want to go for the res. And it's so hard to make this decision, right? Because go for the res. you have to go for something here in just a second. Hasn't decided what he wants to do yet. We'll go for the plant instead. 
Char is still is down. Is he going to get swung? I think Char is going to oh. try and tank for him. Nitro Cell going to come down here. Not going to catch him, though. We'll get planted down. Char is still alive, but he's going to get flanked from behind. Will he get killed? Oh, no! He's down to Salt one HP. Get Gotta give props to Tyler, oh. man. That was a great try. Really, really great try. A really tough one to lose. I think is that's back to back 2v1s the Saints have dropped here now. And Salty to allow... Archer has got them both, too. Yeah, Salty Archer becoming up clutch. This is going to be a 4 to 1 lead. Now, John, this is where I'm going to say must win for St. Clair. I, I don't see them winning this game unless we see this round one for the Saints. Yeah, for sure. And it's so tough to see, right? Because those last two rounds, they're so winnable for St. Clair. They are on a 2v4 scenario. And Thugonomics, he was in that corner for so long. They knew exactly where it was, but he found two picks back to back. And then almost got a third. He did a decent amount of damage to that third player there. And for me, I think the fact that St. Clair took so long to trade him out made it so difficult to get that bomb down in. He had a really good position there, and the grenade came just a little bit too late to actually make that one worth it. So, well played there by both Salty with the clutch and Thugonomics with some smart plays there. And for me, I definitely think St. Clair, like you said, they need to find this round or else you're just not going to end up winning this game. Yeah. Unless there's some miracle like, that comes through. Okay. Yes, you can still win the game, even if you do drop this round, but your chances go from maybe like a 40% chance to like a 10% chance, just like that. So a lot riding on this round, especially for St. Clair, just keeping themselves in this one. So we will see this one, but wrap it on the Blackbeard for something that I, we haven't seen all night long, and I don't think we've seen really kind of like at all throughout the season. So that's definitely a big old question mark. Let's see how he uses that. It is going to be very interesting to see. Not a lot of operator changes outside of that. We aren't going to see the Flores again. I think that was a really good pick. I really like how effective it was there and there. But it is a change up in the location of these sites. It is going to be on the top floor here. So this, again, is pretty attacker favored. So St. Clair hopefully can find this round. Because if they don't find this round, you have to basically play mistake-free for your entire defense, which is a very, very tall task for this team. I mean, just playing mistake-free in Siege is so hard because there's so many mistakes you can make. Like, with all the utility, with all the operators, with all the things that you can do, all... Uh, not all oh, usage. But yeah, like that ooh, rapid early in the round, full well, take down Thugonomics, just the start you need. But, I mean, to be completely fair, BCC's been playing down players all game long, and they are playing just fine, despite being first blood or whatnot. So, uh, that is going to be a little bit on the favor for St. Clair, but I don't think it's going to have too much of an impact in this one. Yeah, for sure. Nade's just going to be stopped here. Flash finally going to come through there, but not going to push through. They know there's a player in there somewhere, but they aren't going to want to push through. Just a lot of destruction coming through this window. One is gonna be a oh, Kinger! Oh my Massive. goodness! Toaster dropped like that. Salty Archer down as well. Now all up to Earthy and Jester. This is looking very, very nice for your St. Clair Saints right now. And they just do need to find the cleanup here now. Only two players left. Jester and Earthy are both stacked up around Kinger. Kinger, if he hops through this window, he's got one right on him. And it looks like Earthy wants to get a little more aggressive with it. Firing off some pop shots. Kinger might have that intel that he needs here. Now Rapid gonna take down Jester. Earthy last alive. And Kinger on the cleanup for a Flawless round to end the half for the Saints. Exactly what they needed to now put this up 4-2 scoreline. Still some work to do if you are from the side of St. Clair, but going under the defending side with more than a round under your belt is definitely a little bit of a sign of light. Yeah, for sure. I think they can feel a lot better about this defending half, but it is still a tall task. They are down two rounds here going into the second half of this game, and I think for me, they're going to have to find an answer to Salty Archer and Thugonomous clutches. I mean, that time Salty and Thugget went down very, very early in the round. And again, we see that. What is, what is Rapid Skins? I swear every single person he has a skin <laughs> on. This is ridiculous. But we are going to see him on the Malusi now. We're going to see him go back on the Jaeger there. So we are going to see a lot of roaming, though. We are going to have three three speed characters with Goyo, Jaeger, and Wamai here for the side of St. Clair. So they really want to be on this roam. They want to be able to move around this map. And I think because you have so many options to go as defenders here i really like this i really like the fact that you're playing a lot of these speed operators because it gives you a lot of unpredictability in your move yes for sure so with that being said it all starts with this uh, it's gonna be another must win round for st Clair. i'm gonna be honest like it's it's gonna be a must wins rounds until i say no <laughs> but it is yeah like, i mean they're down by two you're just really not wanting BCC to hit the five round marker. Once you hit the five round marker, there's something about it in Siege where it's like, okay, this is a little worrisome now. But uh, it is nice to just keep them on that four. So let's see if St. Clair can come through and find their first defensive round. 
Yeah, and it's interesting they're going to start upstairs here. Uh, normally, you'd start off in the basement, but I think for St. Clair, if you're going to go to the basement, you want it to be in that match point where you can feel a lot more secure about your basement defense than your attackers are going to be. So I do like the fact they're chaining this up, starting it on the top floor here. And I think if they can find an early pick, it'll be so huge for them. If they can find Thug, if they can find Salty early, it'd be massive because those two players have been just the crazy good performers so far in this series for the side of BCC. Yes, completely agreed once again, John. And here we are now, five on five, back at even numbers. And it is going to be Salty Archer opening up some of these windows, trying to find an angle. I don't know who we have just on the other side of the wall from him, but we also have a good angle just over there. Char is still looking for something as well. And I mean, overall, St. Clair defense, they're playing pretty positional right now. All the position looks fairly well, and that's going to be Tyler opening it up on a Salty Archer. He's been having a great game so far today, so for Tyler to take him out is definitely a sign of uh, some good hope here. And I love Tyler's positioning. If he just stays here, like I, I really like this spot from Tyler. It really cuts off this whole cross. He has to watch his right, though. It could be very dangerous for him to stay there for a long extended period of time because that is where they will look to rotate to if you are the attacker. So for me, I definitely want to see Kinger here try and pop off. He's 8-3. Oh, that's going to be a kill on Rapid early, though. Jester going to find him, and that's going to be a line drone pulsing out where St. Clair are, but they're not going to find any picks off of it. So, so far, pretty timid round. A minute and a half left, still lots of time for these attackers. Yeah, Kinger's looking for more. He's going to send through some util. That is going to be a nice little gas grenade. He's going to force that player away. Tyler now will find two, but he will get eventually fragged out from Toaster. But Tyler did his job. He did a very big impact in this round, finding two of his own. Now Thugonomics going to run into one, being Char's. Char's peppered down ever so slightly, but will make his way away. Now Thugonomics is firing away some random shots. Not exactly sure what's going on with that. Um, but let's see what happens as oh. Jester takes down Kinger. This puts a lot of problems now for the side of St. Clair. Kinger in a very big spot, but he's going to be positioned. Actually, sorry, that's Jambi's. Kinger's not even alive. But Char's 1v3. He's been in this position so many times tonight, and it's not been too, too hot for him. Yeah, I definitely think Jambi's had a good position there. Oh, Thug going to find the edge out there on Char's. But uh, again, I think that was just really, really good positioning there from the side of yeah, a little bit of a pre-fire there, actually. So... I think um, he heard him, but... Running through the halls, possibly. Yeah. But, I mean, I was going to say, it was actually a really good position there by JMB, but unfortunately, he didn't know that Tyler had actually been sitting there earlier in the round. Mm -hmm. So, I think they knew that there could have been someone positioned there from the fact that Tyler found that frag earlier, and that kind of gave away his position. I also think JMB could have gotten away with playing it a little more passively. It looked like he was peeking the corner a little bit there, trying to find those angles on that window. But I think if he just laid down and forced BCC to actually come through him, then it might have provided him a little bit better of options. But, really, you can't really tell too much in hindsight now so it doesn't really matter but bcc picking up the first one is definitely big for them because now if you're st Clair down by three instead of that two bcc two rounds away from cloaking this one out you have a very very small margin for air if you are from the side of st Clair. yeah i won't be too surprised to see they are going to go into basement here not surprised by that move oh they aren't going to go to basement i thought they would they're going to go for this Second floor defense, again, slightly different positioning now, but, I mean, realistically, I think they had a pretty good defensive start. I think the fact that the early picks went their way was good, but in the end, just a really good coordinated attack there by the side of DCC. So, I think we have to find a defensive round here, because if they pull up the 2-6, I think it's pretty much just over. I'm going to agree. I'm going to agree. If we do not, it's, it's like, you know, win here or... You're kind of done for almost because that's kind of like the vibes we're getting it's probably what the players are somewhat thinking to be honest maybe not but like you gotta have it in the back of your mind saying hey we lose this round bcc's at match point and then we need a flawless gameplay from here on out it's definitely going to be a concern thugonomics still performing as per usual jester actually coming through here now fragging fairly well in this game as well kinger we just gotta see another one of those special 4ks come through for him yeah, and I mean, for sure, I think JMB had his map in round number two. He's struggling a little bit here in map number three at the two and six mark. Not doing too, too hot here. But I mean, for me, I think 5-2 is definitely a tougher scoreline than we would have imagined here. I think for sure I would have liked to see St. Clair get a few rounds more on the attack, tie it to a 3-3. And when you have to play this mistake free, it puts pressure on you, right? Because if you don't win this round, you go to match point, And it just is so hard to play mistake free R6. 
completely agreed. Like, like, it's something we talked about just a moment ago. Like, mistake-free R6 is something you don't even see in the top level of R6, right? Yeah, it's such an easy game to make these minor mistakes on because there's just so much going on at all times. So, with that being said, it is going to be the drones from the side of BCC just gathering all the intel they need before they decide to make their committing push. And Kanger dropping early is going to be far from what you like to see for the side of St. Clair being one of those top players. And if Urfi just shoots straight up, straight up you would actually find JM Beast up there, but nothing gonna actually come from this one. And Urfi, oh no, I thought he was actually gonna potentially find something there, but no. So it is gonna be him now still looking to do some work. Tyler holding his position as well. Char is gonna be peppered down ever so slightly. JM Beast is now still up one health and he's gonna get dropped. So this is now looking really good for BCC and looking really bad for St. Clair. Yeah, 3v5 scenario, not one you want to find yourself in on the defensive side here. Gonna get chipped out, but somehow Rapid can make it away from there, but eventually wow. will be taken in by Jester. That's a triple for Jester. Tyler gonna take one out, will be traded? No. Gonna be able to escape, so a kill there, but... Uh, I think it's lag and yeah. got wall banged or something there, but... Leaves it all up to Chars. 1v4, he's been the last player alive, oh, time in and time again, so it's gonna be one there for him to open things up, but still... Like, I mean, tons to do, right? He does I have mean, a couple of pings, though. He has info on where this player is, so he's going to have to be careful, though. Jester at 1 HP here. Plant going to come down from Coaster. In a 1v3 scenario, oh. going to find one, though. That is huge. Going to get that kill. Going to have a double. Going to get pinged out where the next one is. Not going to be able to land a headshot, though. He could go massive. If he can find this kill, he definitely can win this one, but oh. no! It was a good try. It was a good try. It was try. a good try. He so, knew where that player was. He knew he was on the window, but just couldn't land that. It's a hard heady. To, it's a hard heady to definitely have to challenge there. And he has to challenge it. You're in the position yeah. where you literally have to challenge it. And that's going to put BCC at match point and make things very concerning for the Saints. We need flawless R6, a thing that we don't really see uh, too, too often come through. And it's going to have to happen for the Saints. Four in a row is what's needed to force an OT and keep their NJCAAE playoff run alive. If they do drop one of these next four rounds, what is this Mozzie they will be packing skin? home. What is Mozzie you... legendary skin? What in the world, Rapid? But, I mean, regardless, we are going to see six pick coming through for him. We're going to swap it up. I would definitely just... It is going to be a Frost lock here. That is... That is an interesting pick. We haven't seen a Frost all series so far. I think so. we see it once. I think we saw it once. Okay. No? Maybe not? Maybe not. I don't remember. I I'm getting all... I mean, if it I'm did, getting, it was Everybody very... around me is shaking their head. I'm losing <laughs> confidence in what I just said. <laughs> so. maybe, you have, hey, maybe you have the better memory than all of us. Think about it that way. Yeah. 200 IQ, man. But <laughs> with that being said, this next round about to get hop underway. Jester and Thugonomics both currently sitting in the double digits for their frags. So... They're definitely two players to keep an eye on for the side of BCC, as they have been looking so far so good. BCC's actually won 75% of the rounds in this game already, and they're just looking to keep the ball rolling. St. Clair trying to find an answer back. It's going to have to come here in this round, or else it's not going to happen at all. Backs against the wall. Can St. Clair clutch a snow or BCC stamp their name into the semifinal booklet? And for me, I definitely think... St. Clair is going to have to go crazy in this round. They have to find uh, a really clean couple of defensive round or offensive rounds here. Oh, no, they're on defense. Sorry, defensive rounds here. Uh, and, I mean, you have to win four in a row to even get to the OT. It's so hard to try and get these rounds through because it seems like no matter where they've gone, they haven't gone to basement yet, which has been very interesting to me. The fact that they started off not going towards basement, uh, it seemed to work out decently well so far. For the defense, I mean, obviously you saw in that very, very first round, BCC went there and they weren't able to win it, but it was like a quad kill from Kinger. So, I mean, for me, I'm kind of surprised they're not going to basement at all here so far in this game. Yeah, I, I agree, to be honest. I mean, basement, like you just said, it's where Kinger got his 4K. It seemed to where they looked a little more stronger. Had the closer rounds down towards basement as well, but maybe it's a little different for them on the defensive side. Maybe they're not as comfortable down there uh, defending out. So we'll see what happens. But that being said, it's about a minute off the clock already, and we haven't really seen any shots even being connected yet between two teams. And I think it's uh, both teams are, you know, the nerves really starting to kick in. Yeah, for St. Clair, you're on match point. You have to play perfectly. Any pick could cost you your season in the NJCAAE. So you have to play carefully. You have to play calculated. But I really think Thugonomics being taken out first is huge. That is a really, really good pick. You take out one of those flankers, and now you can start moving on uh, to try and find these other attackers. Yeah, it was a really smart play. Play slow, wait for that flanker to come towards you, take him out, and then play a little more aggressive towards this site as... 
you don't really have to worry about your backs as much as you did before having that 11 and 5 thugonomics on his way towards you now 11 and 6 exactly that's gonna be toaster dropped as well charge on a 2k so far starting this one off and no sight of slowing down as Rapid finds one on Salty as well. Char is still searching for more. Doesn't spot anything out. Both these players will be on the first floor. Earthy and Jester. Jester's been having a good game. Let's see what they can do. I mean, it's a 2 on 5 though. This is, should be St. Clair round. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, if you're BCC, you can take rounds like this where you have uh, a full round advantage right now. You can go for these aggressive plays early on trying to find picks because if you find something early on in these rounds, That's it game could be game over. It could be series over. It could be season over. So you have a lot of flexibility here. But again, it is still game number three. If you force an OT, it's still going to be anyone's game. But now 5v1 here, just going to be Jester, the only one left here on the outside on the Capitao. See if he can do anything, but I think this is just St. Clair's round to win. And, uh, I mean, looking forward to the next one, going to have to keep up this performance. Yeah, he's just running all the way through backyard here, essentially, at this point. I mean, there's players even peeking up from outside. I'm not exactly sure what the Jester play call is here now. Uh, but I think save it's the just... KD. Yeah, save the KD. Oh, oh, he's having a campfire! Oh, Hold look on. at that. We can warm our hands. Warm, up my hands. warm your hands yeah. by the fire, everybody. Yo, get nice and warm. Think about how good s'mores would be right now, John. Oh, stop <laughs> talking about food. You're making me more hungry. <laughs> now we got a kitchen view. What is this? Oh yeah. Ah, oh, John. I mean, gonna... listen. I got Saint Clair right now. Cooking. Cooking. <laughs> cooking. Cooking they up. Need, they need to keep moving this forward. Take the next round. Take the next three rounds for themselves. And I mean, that was a very clean round for them, but. You have to try and keep playing this force BCC to play slow because I feel like St. Clair plays better when they're playing slow, especially on defense. Oh, I, like 100. I, I could not agree more. Once again, John, just saying phenomenal statements all night long. But wow, yeah, it's going to be St. Clair. Uh, like you were saying, playing slow, they haven't really been beaten. Maybe a round or two, just some minor mistakes. But playing really slow for them has provided them so much of an advantage. Like just literally waiting for BCC to walk into their scopes is what we need to see happen. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, just it's all about patience, right? And you're at match point. Attackers it's so hard to hold your nerve to have that patience because you want to make that initial play, put the advantage in your hands, try and give yourself momentum early on in the rounds. But it's so important when you're defending to be able to hold sights, be able to hold doorways because that's where your advantage is. You don't have to push forward. You can hold doorways. You can hold entries and exits because you have that advantage. So I want to see them hold their nerve. And if they can keep this slow pace going, I definitely think they can clutch this one up and bring us to an OT and try and win this one in overtime. Yes, completely agreed once again here. So, with that being said, it's going to be at the side of St. Clair. Still having to make up a few rounds. Still having some work to do. BCC only needing one of the next three to close this one in regulation. Where St. Clair need all three. So we'll see what they can do, like I was saying. But, I mean, honestly, I just... I. If BCC just gets one good, you know, entry frag, one good double kill to start off a round, it's just all downhill from there for the Saints. And that's it's the so hard. You, part. You have to play mistake free R6, which is so difficult because even if you find like a lucky pick through one of these walls, just uh, clearing one of these entries, you find somebody, it is devastation for St. Clair because you go down to that 4v5 and we've seen so far, I think this map has definitely been one where if you have a player advantage, you just take the round. I think, you know, the last two maps had a lot of these 1v2, 1v3, 2v4 clutches that teams came through with. This one, there's maybe been just yeah. one that's coming through, but other than that, it's really just been whoever takes that early player advantage takes the round. So I think that first frag is so important for both of these teams going into this uh, round number 10. Yeah, first blood definitely does have a little bit more of an impact in this one than the previous two maps for sure. So we're going to see who's going to find a first blood if it's going to be VCC or SCC. But it's going to be VCC definitely looking to start making their attack. They're starting to make their way closer and closer to the site, just blowing up all these walls on the way there. They actually got to blow up the wall and the floor underneath them in that same process there. So double whammy. But about a minute and a half already, and we haven't even seen a shot land yet. Yeah, it has just been uh, BCC just setting up their attack, how they want to coordinate it. But Tyler going to find the first pick on the Archer. Again, first frag in the last two rounds has been so important. Will be peaked at. You're not going to move past the wall, though. So we'll survive for the moment. But can he escape this place that he's in? Going to get chipped down very slightly, but he's still somehow alive here. I don't know how. 
Yeah, Tyler just managing to keep his life just on right beside this wine shelf right here. You can see the demon time stare in his eyes there. <laughs> you just look, look at he's staring through the monitor, he's staring through my soul. But Tyler and Rapid finding the frags, Earthy and Thugonomics, all that's left for the side of BCC here. Now St. Clair is looking to attack on a fourth and potentially force an OT. They've been playing fairly well since this defensive side has actually started here now. And like you said, Sinclair played a lot slower in this defense, and look at the result. Thugonomics, we've seen him do this before. We've seen him clutch <gasps> these 2v4, 2v5 scenarios. Rapid going to take down Erfi. It's 1v5, three player, or two players here for St. Clair, low HP. But uh, I think in the 1v5 scenario, they will definitely clean up Thugonomics here, trying to find any frags he can. But will be shot at. Not going to be taken down just yet. Down to half HP, down to a third. Still alive, but they know where he is. It's just his time. Will take one down. No, he's just actually going to get him crouch, but... How is this person still alive? Oh, oh. is he still shooting? <laughs> like, what the heck? Rapid gonna fall, but Kinger, they're on a trade to keep your Saints here alive in this game. Now 6-4. So, John, from what was four rounds needed for the Saints, now down to two? This is looking Very a little doable. scarier for BCC, looking a little better for the St. Clair Saints. However, it is still far from over and still tons of work need to be made from St. Clair because... If you're St. Clair, like, I mean, yes, you have yourself now needing to win the next two to force an OT. But then let's say OT does get revealed. It's 6-6. Six, six. It's the first to eight, I believe, right? Doesn't matter. No circumstances required. It's literally first to eight. So St. Clair, if they do want to actually win this game, they need to win, what, four to the next six? And yeah. they need to win the two to the next two and then four to the next six, which is a lot. far. Yeah, it's just a lot. But, I mean, for them, it's two rounds that they've played where it's been almost flawless, right? You see both those times they lost one person, but in the end, they still end up winning these rounds. And and for me, I definitely think they've looked much better in these last two defenses, and they are going to go first floor again. So, no basement defense so far for St. Clair. They haven't used it at all, which, I mean, it's very surprising to me because I feel like this specific one in Kitchen is very attacker favored because you have so many points of access. You can't even stand outside, shoot through that kitchen window, and be able to access the point. So... I definitely think, looking forward at this defense, I'm going to be very interested to see how St. Clair sets up for it because this typically is not defender favored, but if they have a good strategy for it, I definitely think they can take this one. And the momentum they've been picking up the last couple of rounds has such a huge impact on how this round is going to play out. Yes, for sure. So here we are, a full preparation phase coming to an end here now, and it's going to be the side of BCC getting their entries underway and honestly st Clair, we just gotta keep seeing the slow play style come out it's the biggest thing and i just don't think we should be seeing any early window puts or anything along those lines it doesn't look like we're gonna see anything too much of it i was worried for a second there but it is actually rapid pepper down ever so slightly but still managing to keep his life but man he, they're they're really testing the waters john like they're they're seeing what they can do without completely being shot down yeah, for sure. And Rapid able to escape there. We have a little bit of a change in operators, too. We are going to have the Maverick with Thugonomics, and we're going to have Kinger on the Ella. But Thugonomics is going to find oh, that first no. kill in the JM Beast. That is such a big pick. The fact that they're able to find that one early on is so devastating here. And Thugonomics being able to stay alive here, not get traded out, is even bigger. Yes. So now, I mean, hey, JM Beast being down. He's IGLing from the back seat now, which is tough. Like, it's, it's really. Tough position to want and you know, make these play calls and not be able to be a part of them. So, we're going to see if he can, you know, kind of orchestrate St. Clair to find a round win here and keep them alive so he can make him sway into another round. But if not, then this might be the end of it and St. Clair might be going home. Kinger, Charters, and Rapid have all been spotted and tagged at least once. Tyler, the only one whose position is kind of still unrevealed and still at full HP, so... Yeah, it really looks like uh, we do have BCC on a huge upper hand Salty, so far. Salty has such a good spot here. We'll be able to blow up this castle wall as well. This could be very, very dangerous here. But if they can find Salty on this window, that will be a huge hit. But no one going to be watching it just yet. They are holding other angles. So for now, Salty going to be able to peek into sight. Doesn't have bomb on him though. Toaster does, so Toaster will have to make his way over there. But they could get a free plant here if they end up getting it down quickly. But Char is gonna find Jester. That is so massive. Brings it to even with a minute left here. Yeah, definitely massive for sure. I mean, Dungonomics is gonna be the main concern now that Jester's gone. He's got 13 frags, only seven deaths. He's gonna be a big player to want to take out of this one. You see a lot of these players from the side of BCC are all above these Saints players. They're trying to attack this one from top down. I like the play call from BCC. Not sure how it's gonna work, but we'll find out in just a second. A toaster. He has a pretty decent lineup here to eventually find feet, and he will there. We'll take down Charles. Just some good intel there for him to find. 
and is now going to put St. Clair once again down a player to play off of, and it's such like a hard thing to do is play down a player in Siege. And the problem is they have people above them and below them, so they have to watch their flank. They have to watch above them. There's so many angles that you have to be aware of here. About 30 seconds left. They do have to get bombed down here sometime soon. A lot of players still alive here for St. Clair, but Tyler going to be taken out here by Toaster. Oh, no. That is heartbreaking. They cannot have that happen. And Thugonom is going to find King as well. A 1v4 mm. scenario. Wow. Rapid against 4 to try and save the scene for St. Clair. Finds 1, and that's bomb. He gets it down. If he can live for 13 seconds here, that would be huge. Tries to find 1, but isn't able to get it. He is 10 seconds left. Can they find him here? Shot's going to come down. Going to find 1. Going to find no. another. No. Salty going to get it, and that's going to be it. BCC. Going to end up taking that, and that is going to be the series semifinals coming for them. And St. Clair going to go down here in quarters. A really good try, but in the end, BCC reigns supreme. Yeah, for sure. BCC will take this one just by the skin of their teeth. So it is going to be the win from them. They will be advancing the semifinals. Not 100% on when that match will be or who they will be playing. But we do see the stat line there from that one. Everyone having a pretty good game there. Jake just jam beast. Just not able to find it how he would have liked. And it's going to result in that side of BCC. The, uh... Burton, is it Burton? I, I've been saying it all Burton, day. Burton, yeah, Burton. Burton, Burton Community College. I've been saying it all day. I just suddenly forgot it there for a second. They will take that one. Coastline, 7-1. to one. Saints take Villa, 7-4. to four. And Chalet will be getting cleaned up by BCC in 7-4 to four fashion. A tough one to lose there if you are St. Clair to drop out of NJC, double AE. But a uh, good run nonetheless. Coming out of first seed. Yeah. Honestly, it's just it's just unfortunate to see the unforeseen circumstances of the roster having to yep. go through a rebuild midseason. It's a tough... Um, Tough thing to have to overcome, but I think they overcame it pretty well. They held their own here tonight. I'm very much impressed. If you had the whole backstory, if you if you have all the pieces in your mind on what's happened throughout this season, you know, all the disruptions and how they had to rebuild essentially going into playoffs of this league, like literally yeah. end of the regular season, they had to rebuild. And you're like, oh no, like we just spent all this time, all this work, all this and all that really building up for this program. And it is now just a situation. So to see the storyline, to see what they've went through to get here and actually play like they did tonight, I still got to give them a round of round of applause and they still had a great effort still played some great games got to give props to both rosters yeah for sure and Barton or Burton moving on to the semifinals here and St. Clair had a really good season I definitely think they looked pretty good in the NJC AA uh, I think for all the turmoil that went on they had a really good season the new players shined really well you saw uh, Kinger throughout the season so much improvement uh, in this game he had a, I think two 4ks and an ace like he was unbelievable in this game and unfortunately just not going to be enough to bring them to that semifinal spot but I, I definitely think they looked so much better throughout the season they improved so much even with this last second roster put together and uh, for me I really hope we see a lot of these players going to the next semester I really hope so as well without further ado that will be wrapping up the NJC AAE run for your Saints R6 squad here so it was a little bit of a tough one to lose, but nonetheless, lots have been learned and taken away from it regardless. So overall, we'll see how this one goes going into the next season. But with that being said, let's wrap things up. Give a little, little bit of a shout out to our sponsors, our merchandise and whatnot. And starting us off will be Crunchyroll. You guys can get a 14-day premium trial for free at Crunchyroll.com backslash Saints. They're our newest sponsor this semester really joining us. And they've been a huge help to all of our broadcasts and whatnot. I wouldn't be able to run this without them. So thank you so, so much. And it's essentially the Netflix of anime. Any kind of anime you guys want to watch, you guys can get a 14-day premium trial for free. Crunchyroll.com backslash Saints. And thank you to our other sponsors as well. To Tim Hortons, Subway, the SRC and the St. Clair College Alumni Association. Like I said, wouldn't be possible without them. And if you want to talk a little bit about our merch here, John, I always like talking forward. about our merch. Uh, and just so you know, I, I ordered a, a little bit of merch here for the Christmas season coming Ooh. in. So I don't know when I'm going to actually get it, but hopefully it will be sometime. So you might see me in it in the next semester. So uh, if you want to get some of your own merch, you can get acquire.ca slash saints. You can get hoodies, jackets, t-shirts, and uh, you know, you can get your own custom jersey, which is pretty cool. So if you go to acquire.ca slash saints, can order whatever merch you are looking for they will have it they have mass as well if that's what you want and uh i mean for me i definitely think that looking back on this season specifically for r6 a lot of turmoil but i think they improved a lot throughout this season and i really hope i see some of these players come back in the new in in the new year because for me i think the sky is the limit for them i think they can definitely improve uh so much more and i think really to see them in the new season would be great yeah, so you can see the merch just go away there on the screen now. And yeah, a merch, affordable, comfortable, all of that. And good needs. If you want to wrap St. Clair, you can get there. Acquire.ca backslash Saints. And yeah, like you were saying, the ceiling is so high. The work they put in is so much. And I think that this roster has so much potential. You see it. You see it so much. Yeah. Despite 
the changes that have had to happen, despite all of this that had to happen throughout the season for the R6 roster, they still come in here and perform like this. Gotta give props, right? So good stuff overall from all of these players. Good stuff from Tyler. Thank you to them. Honestly, thank you to Tyler. Thank you to, um, who was the other stuff that came in there? Uh, Chars. Tyler, Chars. I, I can't remember there for a second. I just cast the full series. I just can't remember. <laughs> but yeah, so Chars, thank you for coming in here and playing tonight. Thank you to Tyler. Really means a lot to those two players yeah, really coming in here and sure. they help out this roster for the remainder of the season. So thank you all around. Thank you to Dan on the production. Thank you to Kermit for observing. Thank you all around. Thanks for joining me on the mic, John. And hey, it's always a good time. It's that, always a good time with you on the mic. It's so much fun. Yeah, with Enjoy that it being so much. said, though, we will be wrapping things up here now. This was Jackson and John on the mic here. I'm sure you guys will see us on the mic here oh, again yeah. throughout the week. I will be taking Wednesday to Friday off, though, so not then. But with that being said, I'll catch you guys on the mic here with some more St. Clair Saints action going forward in the remainder of the season. But with that being said, that's going to be the League and uh, League Saints on run. Friday. Yeah, League, on, League yeah. on Friday. That's the next one? Yeah. League on Friday. Okay, on so... Friday. Stay tuned. Saints giving CA on all socials if you guys are interested. My name is Jackson the Pride Brown. Joined alongside John Bill Bangs Udima. You guys are watching St. Clair Saints R6, and you'll catch you all on the next one. Has this ever happened to you? You tune in to watch Saints Gaming compete at your favorite title, but you end up missing it. Scrolling through Twitter to find results is just such a chore, and it looks like there's no easy way to find out everything you've missed. Luckily, there's a solution. Hi. Millie Bays here, and I'd like to introduce you to St. Clair's Bird's Eye View, the number one show to keep up with everything about Saints gaming. Get weekly recaps, see great highlights, hear exclusive interviews with players and staff, and so much more. That's Bird's Eye View, available in podcast or video form at a website near you.